Hi everyone, today I'll be talking about the Tone Curve tool in your image editing software so that you can take more control over editing your images. Now the Tone Curve tool allows you to control say the contrast and brightness and saturation of each of the individual colors in your image or all the colors at once. And this is much more powerful usually than using the individual slider controls like for brightness and contrast. And it allows you to get better results and be more creative. So the first thing I'm going to do is just give you a quick demonstration of editing an image only using the tone curves. And then I'm going to go into more detail about the hows and whys I made those adjustments to the tone curve. So you can kind of see in detail how the adjustments affect the image. All right, so here's an image I took a couple years ago of the Shenandoah Mountains, and I'm just going to do a quick edit. So first thing I'm going to do is just increase the contrast a little bit. So I'm going to apply what's known as just a simple S curve to the image. So now this curve, instead of being a straight line, is a little bit more of an S shape. And then what I want to do is I probably want to try and increase the vibrance of the sky here, the blue. I mean, it's already a nice blue, but just for demonstration purposes, let's, let's make it a little bit more vibrant. So I'm going to push the blues up a little bit up here, like so. And then on the mountains, uh, what I want to do is increase the contrast between, say, this green and, the, and, and this green and these gray rocks. Uh, I want to make these rocks look a little more red, which is a nice complementary color for green, right? So I'll go into the red channel, and I'm just going to raise the reds up just, just a little bit so that they stand out more, like so, without affecting too much the other colors in the image. All right, now let's do a quick before and after. And as you can see, I was very able to quickly to change the look of this image very simply using tone curves. So I have a little more vibrant blue sky, and I have a little better contrast between the rocks and the green trees. Now let's go into detail exactly how and why I chose those points and colors when I was working with this image. All right, so I've reset all the changes I made in the tone curve, so we're back to our original image. Now let's look at all of the controls that we have in the tone curve. The first one here is the select channel, meaning we can select individual color channels of red, green, or blue. Now, our images are made up of those three primary colors, and mixing those together gives us every color that we see in our images. And if we select the RGB, we're saying we want to work with all three channels at the same time. Or we can select the individual color channels, red, green, and blue, so we're only working with red in this case. Now, when we're working with all three channels at the same time, we're effectively only working with the brightness and contrast of the image and nothing else. Versus when we're working with the colors, we'll be working with the saturation uh, and brightness of those individual colors. Now, let's go down into the histogram itself. We have a y-axis here and an x-axis here. Now, along the x-axis, is basically our highlights and shadows and tones in the image. So down here are the shadows, then we have the midtones, and then these are our highlights. And the histogram represents all of the pixels in the image and where they are in terms of their tone. So we have a little bit of a spike right here in the highlights. So this is probably all of the clouds that we see. And then we have some midtones here, which is probably a lot of the blues and greens. And then we have a lot of pixels down here in the shadows, which is probably down in the trees in the forest area. Uh, and that's basically how that works. Now we have uh, two sliders here. And what this does is this compresses those uh, values down to, say, 133. So if I move this halfway, I've compressed this down to, let's say, 128, which is, you know, about right in the middle. And what that means is I'm telling the tone curve to compress the values, meaning any values that are higher than 128 in this image, push them all the way to 255, which is this number here. And then when I slide this slider over, what I'm telling the tone curve to do is compress all of the values below 122, just make those zero. So any values it finds at 122, it's just going to push those down to zero. 
Now the y-axis here represents sort of the lightness and brightness of the tones versus where the tones are and clipping them. Uh, this is referred to, normally this point here is referred to as your black point, meaning you're going to allow black as the darkest tone. And then up here is your white point, and then right now it's set at 255, so we're saying we can allow the maximum value of 255, 255 or pure white as the maximum brightness. But I can change this. If I bring this down, say, halfway to, say, a middle gray of 128, now I've told the tone curve to make the brightest point in the image, the white point, actually a middle gray. So as you can see, all of the clouds here are now not white, but they're actually a middle gray. And if I slide the bottom slider, the black point, up to middle gray, what I'm saying is the darkest area in the image can be no darker than middle gray or 128 and as you can see all of the uh, forest and everything down here there's no blacks anymore the darkest part even down in here is actually a middle gray and if i bring this down all the way to zero you can see i've made everything virtually black or it is black because i said any points that are uh, above zero just make it zero <laughs> um, and let me, let me reset that. All right, now, the last thing in here is this line. And this is the best way to control the tone curve. And think of this line as like a piece of string, a rubber band, and you're holding it up with push pins. So we have a preset push pin here in the bottom left and a push pin up here in the top right. And I can add a push pin here right in the middle and just push this up to bring the midtones up. Or I can put a pin down here, which is along the x-axis in the shadows. Right now, they're at this sort of lightness. But if I bring this down, I can say, bring the shadows down just a little bit like so. And that's basically how that works. Uh, I can add another push pin here and really push the highlights up and bring the shadows down. And sometimes you accidentally put a pin, like I did right here, that you don't want. So the way to get rid of that pin is you just click and hold on it and just drag it off of the uh, tone curve tool. Like this one here, if I don't want this one anywhere, I can just drag it off like so. And now I'm left back with just my two pins. Now let's look at one of the colors. Let's say we want to work with the red channel. Now. It's kind of the same idea. This is the lightness of the red, and this is where the reds are in the image. Now, if I want to clip all of the red channel, say, let's, let's move this down to half. So what I'm saying here is any reds with a value of 129 or higher, just make them all 255. And the same thing here, just like when we were working with all channels at the same time, what I'm doing now is any values of red below 126 just make them zero, so basically black or invisible. And then this makes the lightness of those reds a little bit higher. So instead of clipping completely to zero where they're black, uh, I can say just clip them all down to 126 instead. So as you can see, it brought them back up. All right, so let me reset everything again and let's talk about one more thing. And that's when I move my mouse over the image. Look at the uh, red line here. There's a little blue dot jumping around as I move my mouse around the image. And what that blue dot is indicating is where in the histogram I am in terms of highlights and shadows. So as you can see, the clouds are in the, in the very high highlights. And then as I move into the blue sky, they're kind of in the midtones. And then of course down in here in the shadow areas is all of the forest. And this is what helped me pick the points that I was going to adjust when I was working with the tone curve earlier. So just to demonstrate again very quickly, I'm gonna work with all the channels at one time to change the brightness and contrast. And what I wanna do is probably change the contrast down in the forest area. So I noticed the blue dot was jumping around here. They're all at about this brightness now, so I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to pull up the midtones. 
And now that should give me just a little better contrast down in this area. Now let's work with the red channel. So I'm going to click on the red channel and then move my mouse over this. And most of the tones that I want to change are right in that area there. So let's put a pin right about here. And then I'm going to add a pin here and here to kind of hold the rest of the line in place. And then I'm going to just pull this up and brighten those reds up right in that tone. And it looks like I affected the green a little bit more than I wanted. So I'm going to pull that down like so, so that I'm not affecting the greens as much, but there we go. And then the last thing is the blue channel. Let's see if I can affect the blue a little bit right in here. So what I want to do is I'm going to put a pin right about there. I'm going to put one here and here to kind of hold those in place. And make sure those are down. Okay. And I'm just going to raise this up a little bit just to make it a little more intense. And we're done. So a quick before and after. And as you can see, you know, I got my red mountains back with a deep, rich blue skies. Now, when you're working with a tone curve, you don't have to just work with color images. You can also work with black and white images. And when you work with black and white images, you can do what they call split toning. So you take a black and white image and then you gradually add a little bit of color in the highlights and shadows and get this kind of neat split tone look. So let's do one of those real quick. All right, so here's a picture of a marina I took at night, and let's just convert this quickly to black and white, like so. And let's go back to the tone curve. And let's work with only the color channels first. So what I'm thinking of doing here is, basically I wanna make the skies kind of a red orange color. And then I wanna make the water down here sort of a very faint blue or tint of blue. So I'm already here on the red channel, so I'll select that. And I'm gonna move my mouse around here in the sky and I can see where the blue dot is. It's right there, just below the midtones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a dot right here or a pin right here. And then I'm gonna put one on either side just so that I don't affect anything else. I really don't need one over here because there's no pixels here to change, but let's go ahead and increase the sky just a little bit, just like that. So you can see right away the sky is more red. That might be too much. Maybe back off a little bit there. All right, now let's change the tones down here uh, to blue. So we'll make that blue. And I'm going to move my mouse around here and see where it's bouncing around. And most of it's bouncing around right about there. So I'm going to put a pin here. And there's already a pin close enough over here. So I'm going to add another pin here. And I'll just put one over here just to hold it even more. And I'm just going to increase this so it's kind of blue. There. Uh, might have been a bit too much. Let me back off this because it was kind of bleeding into the sky, but I can bring this down so it's affecting less of this area. And back that off. Not too much blue, but that looks good. All right, so now I have a split toned image, black and white image. So this is kind of a tint of red, and then down here is a tint of blue. And if you want to compare the before and after, let's just turn the tone curve adjustments off. And that's the black and white. And then there's the split tone. Black and white. And there's the split tone. All right, one last thing you need to understand when you're working with tone curves are opposite colors. And the easiest one being the opposite of black is white and the opposite of white is black. But the opposite of red is cyan, the opposite of green is magenta, and the opposite of blue is yellow. And I've just included the RGB values just for reference, but let's see how this works when you're working with the tone curves. So we'll go back to my uh, landscape image and reset this. 
Now, when I'm working with all three channels, I'm getting, I can push this to white and the opposite of white is black, right? And when I'm working with individual channels, I have red, but the opposite of red is what? Cyan. And I can go to green. So I can push green, more saturation, but the opposite of green is magenta. So this is starting to look more like a twilight shot, right? So you can think of a lot of ways to use this creatively, I think, uh, when you understand opposite colors as well. So there's pushing blue, but the opposite of blue is yellow. So that's kind of warming it up a little bit, right? I'm going to include links to all the images I used in this video down below so you can kind of practice on those before you have a go on your own to kind of duplicate what I've been doing. But also I'm going to include the color chart because I found that really handy uh, to understand how the different controls uh, in the tone curve affect different colors in an image. Uh, so definitely practice using that as well. And now if you have any questions, just leave them down below as well in the comments. But uh, if you enjoyed this video, you know, consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the like button, uh, maybe buy me a coffee. But either way, hopefully we'll see you again soon.